What's up everybody, Ryfex here. Today I'm going to review the 3A Toys Halo Reach 1-6 scale Carter figure. Um, first I'm going to get started on the front of the box. Um, you can see like this checkered uh, uh, like Halo menu pattern that you see it a lot when you're going through like multiplayer and stuff when it's loading you could see this checkered pattern um, Halo and then once a scale collectible figure and then here we have the UNSC symbol and then the side of the box it's just that same pattern and then the side of the box you could see um, his knife called the SA529 well actually uh, his number is A as SA529 this is showing his accessories but uh, the combat knife was sheath uh, here's the grenades um, M9HEDP AP4 frag grenade times two um, then there's his uh, DMR, the M392 DMR, designated marksman's rifle, and down here is the intro. I'll give you a better look at that. Abducted as a child and transported to the classified plant planet of Onyx, where he trained in the Spartan 3 project, Carter A. Carter A259 quickly displayed his skills as a leader. Sometime later, he was given the rank of commander of the Special Warfare Team, codenamed Noble Team, where he served as a leader for a number of years. Until he got everyone almost killed. And killed himself. <laughs> I hope you know that game already. <laughs> If you're watching this, but yeah, here's the other side of the box, and here's the bottom. Whoops. Xbox 360, 343 Industries, 3A, all that stuff. Oh, and here it is, Halo, and then UNSC on the top of the box and that's it for the box okay everything on the figure here is what was except for this stand this stand is to help them keep them up I don't know why they don't come with stands because they do kind of kind of have a tough time you know keeping themselves up they aren't really they will fall over and I just noticed something. This is upside down. And look at that. There you go. <laughs> wow. Anyways. So yeah, this stand doesn't come with it. It's just to help him keep him up. So yeah, this guy looks absolutely cool. I really love how he looks. Uh, it has that awesome paint job from 3A that that they that they do is uh, they provide this weathering effect and it, it just looks like it's been stripped and battered like he's came out of a war and he's been shot at blasted at for a while and the lights just look amazing um, this is everything that came on the figure I think I said that before, but yeah, um, I'll give you a closer look at this guy. But yeah, you could just see all the stripping. This figure is not old at all, but it just looks like he's just been through a war, as I said. looks so cool 
that's just the helmet and the lights provide a really nice touch as well and we'll go down on his back let's look at that nice detail it's amazing paintwork it's amazing all over his armor and let's see just look at that I need a new tripod. You can just see on his boots too. All his armor. Just all that detail. So yeah. Um oops. It's coming off on me. So yeah, uh, he has these magnets on him um, right here on his grenade. It's just a magnet. It's just magnetized, and then you just uh, yeah. See how it just shot towards the other magnet in his leg, and then just attached itself. And then right here we kind of have uh, it's half magnet. And then half like uh, it's kind of half uh, like a it's half like a peg uh, type uh, thing for his uh, pack here. And the same goes for this pack. It's just half magnetized and then half peg that you just stick it in. And it should stay. It stays alright, but it could be better. And then right here, we have a magnetized armor as well. They even made it look uh, weathered in the armor here. That's really nice. As well as this side of his armor. It's a big shoulder armor here. You can see the magnet. Even on the inside they make it look weathered. Really cool. There we go. And um, as far as magnetization Oh, his uh, his knife and sheath are magnetized as well. Let's see if I can get it out of here. There you go. His knife is all dirty. <laughs> really cool. Looks weathered and everything. And it's just magnetized like that. And it sticks. It's pretty cool, but it does fall off pretty easy. As far as the grenade, knife, and these chest armors, they can fall off pretty easy. So I recommend keeping an eye on it if you're moving it around. And we'll see his uh, DMR here. Just really nice. Look at all that detail. Just awesome. Nice detail. Really nice. See the scope. Wow. 
just love how that looks. Really cool. Really nice. Lots of detail. And this has magnetization too. I forgot to mention that. Actually forgot about it for a minute. So yeah, it keeps falling over on me. Yeah, 3A you need stands for your figures. So anyways, um, here's the magnetization of the DMR and just magnetizes right there and you can put it on his back. Oh, and I forgot to mention this pack does come off as well as, mag as magnetization. So yeah. I forgot I always forget about that one. It's just it just seems like it's supposed to be there not and not come off. But yeah. It's cool. So okay, um let's do some articulation. Is solder here. You can see this part is made out of rubber, so it can provide some that articulation we see and it goes all the way down to there and then forward and you could almost make a 360 and there and yeah the yeah he can make a 360 and yeah that's what I was saying about the mag magnetization it's just sometimes doesn't work that too well and then right here is rubber and do his elbow he's pretty much hindered by his armor and that's about it as far as elbow articulation and then his wrist they just turn and fingers he has three points bend them all the way like that Then you can make a fist, or whatever you want to call that. Um, and then right here is rubber on his abs. He can't go too much at all. It's kind of weird. <laughs> it just bends back to where it's supposed to. And then down here. He has rubber on his legs. It's really weird. It moves, but it just wants to go back into its same position. And then here's some knee articulation. It's actually decent. Of course, all this is rubber, and then his armor on his knee. It's plastic, and then right here, his uh, ankles go like that, like a ballerina, and then up there, and then go side to side. Really good on that part. I guess they're trying to make up for not having a a stand, but it's it's still too flimsy for me. So um. Let's see. His lights. Are. If you could see a little switch right here. Are for his. Uh, front arm lights. There's another one on this side as well. And when you want to get to it. You have to pull this part off. And then you could get into the little screw into the batteries. They use uh, little watch batteries. I mean the smallest batteries, disc shaped batteries you could find in the store. That are really meant for watches. You need three of them on each side. They're a real pain in the butt to get in there. So I recommend having some either really small hands or um, some tweezers and and a, a, a flathead screwdriver to keep the spring down. And then 
uh, something that they f uh, fixed on the Emil figure because this came out first is that they put a button well for this there is no button if you want to turn these lights off that are on his legs his front and everything there is a switch that you have to take this pack off in order to get to it so I take this whole pack off and then pull that out in order to turn the lights off see the switch is right here and, and I'll show you how the lights turn off see his lights on his yep there goes another one the lights on his uh, helmet turn off uh, as well as his chest and his legs they all all those turned off and of course on his uh, pack in the back of course and then there's the wiring it uses two uh, disc shaped batteries I believe they're 2032s so you need two of them in order to uh, uh, get that lit up for you they're pretty easy to get in there and we'll turn the lights back on I mean they glow really nice oh uh, let me show you the back this is the circuitry stuff for the backpack so the lights can turn on easily there you see the lights just turned on for me still really nice figure I it's just it needs a stand and and you know it it just needs a stand and it needs uh you know better uh magnetization it's, it's still it's pretty flimsy I hope they could correct that in the uh master chief figure still a pretty nice figure so yeah that's uh, the Halo Reach Carter by uh, 3A Toys uh, he runs around about 200 or so dollar US dollars um, it's a really nice figure the painting is incredible uh, as I said before I wish it came with the stand and easier light ac uh, accessibility which they fixed on the Emil figure as far as the light and um, uh, the magnetization still needs work even on their latest figure. I feel like they're testing the market with these reach figures in order to uh, make sure they get everything right for the Master Chief figure which is supposedly supposedly coming out hopefully next year we'll see when that comes out. But still a amazingly detailed uh, figure. They're, they're on the right track it's just not there yet. But it's but it's still worth I think it's still worth the two hundred dollar price tag because if this had Hot Toys name on it this easily would have been over three hundred especially since this is a fourteen inch figure um, their Iron Man's I, I don't even think their Iron Man's have as much detail as this and they they're running almost three hundred now and yeah I, I still recommend it for you Halo Reach fans still a great figure even with its little quirks and I'm, I'm still loving it um, so yeah thank you guys for watching and 
I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.